Well, the fight for our life is real and this series we're in the middle of as church is such a pertinent series for where we are today. The fight for your life and it's the fight of our life. We're in a fight for our attention, the fight for our body, the fight with that virus that's after our bodies, the fight for our mind with what's coming at us, our soul and our spirit. Can I encourage you, church, to feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. If you feed your faith, if you can actually get to that point where you believe, where you can feed your faith and let the doubt starve to death, because I think we need to be people of faith. I think God calls us to be people of faith. In Matthew, there's this incredible scripture. In Matthew chapter 21, verses 21 to 22, it says, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. A couple of things from the start of this scripture is, Do you believe? Can I encourage you to be believers today? The world needs believers in God. The world needs us to actually have that assurance, that faith, that belief in God, that whatever we ask for, as we ask for this virus to go, as we ask for our needs as a family, for our businesses, and we pray, be people of prayer. In our church, we have this statement, prayer is as necessary as air. And honestly, as we breathe out our prayers, not in a religious way, just in a normal way to God saying, God, we need you. We lay our needs down before Him. If we believe, it will come to pass. Embrace this kingdom life, it says. What is the kingdom life? The kingdom life is that we walk alongside people and love people. The great commandment which says, love your neighbour as you love yourself. People matter, you matter. As you love your neighbour, walk alongside them. There's people today who need Jesus. There's people who don't have a hope like you have as a Christian. If you walk alongside them, invite them into your dinner parties, invite them into your small group, invite them around your house to get this kingdom life happening, the kingdom of God, which is loving people. And it says the kingdom life and don't doubt God. Because sometimes we can be in that point where we doubt God, where we're saying, oh, I don't know God. You don't doubt God. You start to trust God. This is what I love. It says that if you don't doubt God, you'll not only do minor feats like the one I did to the fig tree. He's talking about a fig tree dying as he walked past it. It had no fruit. But it also says this, but you will triumph over huge obstacles. And right now, a huge, huge obstacle is a virus. Right now, it's that whatever that pressure is coming. Some people, the huge ob- obstacle is in their business, is keeping their business alive. But it says absolutely everything, ranging from small to large, as you make it part of your believing prayer, gets included as you lay hold of God. What are you including in your prayer? How are you praying? It's not a religious prayer. It's not, oh, well, Father, our Father who art in heaven. That's a great prayer Jesus was teaching us to pray. It's, it's that real heartfelt prayer, that cry out to God as, God, I need you. God, what about this and what about that? And that is the answers. It's incredibly powerful. You see, as a church, we're not just a church service. It's not, our church is not built on a Sunday experience, even though we have a Sunday experience and it's an important experience that we come together. And that's why we're still running our online experience for you today, that you come together to worship where two or three are gathered. He is there in the midst of it. No matter where you are today, God is with you as you gather, as this service is in many rooms across this city, across this nation, across this world as we're reaching out into places of Spain and people are watching online, people are watching as we've reached out into different areas of the world and coming together to worship today. So we're not just a church service on Sunday. We are about a discipleship model, that we walk alongside people. We are intentionally friendly to people. We want people to know Jesus. We believe this incredible gospel that we have, that encounter with God that we had. We believe it. That's why we want to share it, not to force it down someone's throat, but just to love them. So they look at you and go, what is it about you? We call it friendships with grace. We have a grace opportunity with our friendship. 
that we, we love people and we let God do the work. We don't have to do that work. God will do that work. So have a great time together in your dinner parties as we gather for community and we come together as community in our small groups. Can I encourage you to have a fantastic time? It's a place where we can care and connect with people and people to come in together in our services today. We can connect, care and connect as visitors have come into your home or come into where you're holding this service right now that People are connecting and you're able to care for them as you worship God together today. We are worshipping God. We are in many rooms, in many places across the world, worshipping God together. Isaiah puts it this way, and I think this is such an important scripture for us today. It says, Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. What an incredible promise that God is with us. Do not be afraid. In this world and the circumstances we face, don't be afraid. Another verse of that scripture says, fear not for I am with you. It says don't be discouraged because that's the thing that will take us out is our discouragement. It takes us out when we get so looking at our problems and, and looking at the, the wow, the news and all that that's going on. Don't be discouraged. Look to God. Walk outside and see incredible skies, be it nighttime and stars, be it daytime and sunrises and sunsets. As you look out and say, see these amazing things, meditate on those things. The promise of that scripture says, I will strengthen you and help you. God will strengthen you. You will become stronger through this time. He will help you in this time. See, our God is not a God that's so far off. He's a God that's with us and He will work with us and help us. And then it says, I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. That God will hold you in this circumstance. As you seek after Him, He will hold you. He gives you creative solutions, creative answers to the problems that we face, creative things as we go through our life, how to deal with these things. And then we are in a new world for the next season of our life. And we don't know how long this will go for, but we know God is with us. And we're in this new world. Even what we can do right now with our service is a new way of doing church. And it's a way that we can go through this season, then we can come back together and physically worship God together as this virus goes through. Can I encourage you to replace fake news? Replace it. Replace the fake news. Replace fear with fact and faith. Replace fear and fake news with fact and faith. Fear says the sky is falling. We'll never get out of this. Fake news says it's worse than what it is. Fake news is saying, you know, there's a whole pile of this. One, one news report I read that 50 million Australians will die. Well, there's only 25 million of us. It's fake news. It's, it's, it's so much hype around it. Then come back to fact. Yes, there is a virus. Yes, the virus is real. Yes, it has uh, rates that get infection higher than the flu. And yes, the recovery rate is incredibly high. So we come back to the fact, we acknowledge the fact of life. But then we come back to faith. And faith says, God works all things together for good for those that love Him. Do you love Him? It's that, inc that incredible promise. Do we know Him or do we only know of Him? Can I encourage you, build your faith. Build it with testimony. We, the Bible says very clearly, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That's where Jesus died on the cross. That's done. Can't do that again. And the word of our testimony, that testimony is new every day. What is your testimony today of how God has helped you? I encourage people every year to have a word from God. Have a scripture, have a word that God has given you because that allows you to build that faith and that testimony around your life. Can I encourage you, if you haven't got a word, get a word. Go to God and say, God, give me a word. Go to your Bible and open up and read and God will speak to you a scripture out of that Bible that'll speak to you and say, here's your word, that you've got something you can hold on to. Hebrews says, anchor your soul. Anchor your soul in the word of God. So can I encourage you, if you haven't got a word, go and get a word. Read the scriptures, grab some of these scriptures from today and make it your word. Philippians says this. In Philippians 4, Verses four to eight. Always be full of joy in the Lord. Joy is what takes us through challenges of life. 
We sometimes need to replace why our feelings with a feeling of joy. Laughter is incredible, me- incredible medicine. So can I encourage you, find that joy. The, the Scripture says, always be full of the joy in the Lord. And I say it again, rejoice. Find those things to rejoice. Let everyone see you consider in all that you do, the Scripture says. What does that mean? It means we, can, we take our thoughts through this process that we're not running off with, oh no, the sky's falling or running off doing something that out of reaction. No, no, we're considerate. We've thought about it. Don't make your decisions in those times of stress. Sleep on them and then make your decisions in that time after you've considered it. But it's this promise says, remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Well, that's easier said than done, isn't it? But it's something we need to come to. We need to put our worry aside. One of the things I've found about it, the things that I worry about most often never come to pass. And yet it can consume our mind. And the antidote to that, and this is what God says in this scripture, is saying to us, Paul wrote this in Philippians, wrote it to a church in incredible pressure. He said, instead, pray about everything. Write your prayers down. If you've never prayed before, can I encourage you? Just write your needs down. Write them down and then cross them off as God answers them. As you pray, thank Him for all He's done and thank Him for what He's doing. But I love this scripture. It says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. I remember when my father passed away, I walked out of the hospital and the world was still going on. And I was trying to think in my, my head, don't you realise my father's just died? And the world was going, cars were going past, people were walking, people were smiling. And, and I, I was going, oh God, look at this. And that incredible peace came upon me. And I had to preach at his funeral. I had to actually do his funeral. And as I preached, you know, there was this incredible peace came upon me. Uh, and I couldn't even get cranky with things. It was just such an incredible peace. Find that peace because His peace will guard your heart and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, the way to do that, and this is what Paul's encouragement is, he says, now, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. In this time of season, can you think about what's true? Can you come back to fact? Fix your thoughts on the facts. Fix your thoughts on what is honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. I I think that's so important that we look outside, that we find the things that that make us happy. We look outside and we see incredible grass growing. That We see now green grass, which is an amazing thing to see. It's amazing how quickly it can change. Think about those things. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I look at children and I look at them playing and they don't know what's going on. They've got no idea and they're having a great time because they're enjoying life. Can I encourage you to enjoy life through this season? Get with friends, have a dinner party, have a small group gathering. Gather around people that lift you up. It's so incredible to think that we can meditate on good things and have a great life no matter what the circumstances are. This season will pass. It will. It passed, we've seen it happen before. World War I passed, World War II passed. We saw the Vietnam War pass. We saw Y2K pass. We saw the recession in 1988 pass. We saw the financial crisis pass. Scripture says you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but walk through, don't stop. Don't stop in this season. Walk through with God. Friend, it's so important that you know God. So important that you find freedom, discover your purpose and make a difference. This is our growth track. Uh, And the growth track is not a linear process. It's about knowing God in your moment. We need to know God right now. And we need to find our freedom. We really do. It's something we, we work through. And as a church, if you're in our church, you'll know this, this, this is what we, how we do life. But it's not a linear thing. It's not a been there, done that, done the growth track. It's actually a thing we do every day for every season. Right now, I need to know God as for being your pastor. I need to find freedom and work out how we do what we do when we go through this season, which we're, I believe we're really well positioned for as a church, to discover our purpose, to make a difference in the world. That's who you are called to be and that's who we are called to be as the church, to know God, 
find freedom, discover your purpose and make a difference every single day. But the key is, do you know God? Do you know Him? Do you know Him or do you only know of Him? I want to encourage you to know God. Don't just know about Him. Don't just know the Bible. It's great to know the Bible, but it's more important to know Him. So today, do you know God? Is it something that is that you have this incredible encounter of God, that you know Him? Because God wants to give you hope. He wants to give you this incredible encounter of hope that you can deal hope to a world that's hopeless. We are dealers of hope to a hopeless world. And we need to know God to be that dealer of hope. We need to actually know Him, to have that encounter with Him. So today, if you don't know God, would you ask Him into your life? It's such a simple thing. It's not meant to be difficult. It's not about cleaning yourself up because it's a journey with Him. Some people think, oh, I can't ask God because of my problems. Well, look at this and look at that. No, no, no. It's about just knowing Him. We try and make that as simple as we possibly can for you. So today, would you, ask, would you say a simple prayer with me? The simple prayer is simply inviting God into your life. And it's such a simple prayer and it's not meant to be a religious thing. It's meant to be a relationship thing. And it's as simple as praying this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for coming into my life today and making a difference in my life. Thank you that you've forgiven me for everything I've done wrong today, that I can start in you. Jesus, I ask you to make yourself so real to me. Amen. Thanks again for joining us for our online service today. Wherever you're watching, it is an honour to have you with us and we're hoping you're having a great time, whether you're by yourself or in a watch party, having brekkie or lunch or dinner or midweek, wherever you are, thanks so much for choosing to join us again today. Uh, something that is a bit special that we can do with an online platform like this uh, is get to discuss the message a little bit further and break it down and give some more practical application perhaps and go a little bit further into it. And so after a fantastic message that we heard from Ken today, uh, we're going to ask him a few questions. To, to see how we can take what he said uh, and apply it in our life. And maybe you can discuss these things around your small group, whether today or at a later date or online even. Uh, but we hope this is a helpful resource for you and it keeps the discussion going and the growing continuing on in your life. Um, so Ken, you said right at the beginning of your message something that I really liked. It was uh, feeding faith and starving doubt. Um, now, what do you think the best ways to feed our faith is at the moment? Yeah, it's, that's a really good question. It's, uh, the Scriptures put it this way, Romans 10, 17 says that you, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, that's a really interesting Scripture because that word there is a rhema word. It's a spoken word of God for you. And that's why that, the passage that I was preaching about in that, that service was about having a, a testimony or having a word or having a Scripture that's really alive for you. Because you need to repeat it. Overcoming, uh, we get faith by overcoming the, our negativity and our doubts. Now, faith comes from hearing. Yeah. Hearing's important. So as you speak it out, you hear. And some people don't, don't realise that, but you actually get strength and faith out of what you hear. Same as you get fear from what you hear. You, you watch the news or you're listening to stuff on the radio or on the net. You get, it can build fear in you, but faith is the opposite. So you build faith out of having this Word of God and you speak it out and hear it. That's why Paul said to Timothy, he said, stir up the faith that is in you. Mm -hmm. And it's the faith that was given to him. He says, oh, uh, you prophesy. So he's telling him to prophesy, to speak it out so he hears it. And it's so important today that we speak out truth and we hear truth. And that builds our faith, practically builds our faith, that yeah. we speak it out, become those people who speak out truth. And that's where we even deal hope. We deal hope by speaking out truth to people, not fear. And to build that hope, we're a dealer of hope and deal that hope out to people today. Yeah, that's really good. I think at the time, 
like that we're in, the words that we're saying are vital. Mm, uh, there's a lot of things that I'm hearing and maybe said in jest or, or serious or whatever, but it, it's filled with negativity and hopelessness and doubts yeah. and maybe sarcasm is covering a lot of those things, but their words are still powerful. That's, that's a really good one. You mentioned there uh, about where we're dealers of hope and the way we speak is one way we deal hope. Yeah. Do, do, what are possibly some other ways, this might be a good question for you to think about and discuss is mm. how could we be dealers of hope right now? But do you have any other suggestions for us at the moment? Absolutely. If you've got neighbours around you, can you give them a little note that says, can I help um, if they need you to pick something up, particularly the elderly, uh, you know, we need to be helping those people. People with kids, you know, we've got some packs coming out from our kids' church. Yeah, that's that so cool. You can give out to your neighbours' kids. Uh, so just giving that that helping in these circumstances, we we go forward to to actually think of practical ways to help. That's help and hope. That's what we do with our farmers and that's what we want to do for our community is that we actually give out help packages, but we also give hope packages. We also give them the ability to tap into an online service like yeah. we've done today. Uh, we, but practically, even if you give them a note to say, can I pick up your bread and milk for you and leave it at your front door and things like that, just that provides real hope for people because they know someone is thinking about them, someone's caring for them. Yeah, I think that's very helpful. And if you've got some ideas, why don't you put them down in the comments if you're watching live or even if you, if you have some ideas that you think are worth sharing, uh, find our contact details on, the e uh, on our website or our app because we'd love to share it with our small groups, uh, some, some really practical ways that we can be dealers of hope in a hopeless world. Um, probably one th other thing at the moment, and you touched on this a bit, but it's a real strength of our church, is the community factor yeah. that we have and discipleship as that intentional friendship, as you put it. Yeah. Um, at a time where people are a bit nervy about social interaction yeah. and we're all into, like social distancing is being a big push and, and a real thing kind yeah. of at the moment, how does discipleship or, or community even look at the moment as gatherings are getting smaller and smaller and smaller? Yeah, absolutely. And the government is obviously shrinking gatherings and that's why we're doing our online service and we don't know where that'll end up. Uh, I know Donald Trump in the US put it down to 10. Uh, and, you know, but we can still gather together in, in our small group environments, in our dinner party environments. Everyone's still got to eat, so we may as well gather together and find some encouragement from each other, play a game, play Uno you know, and different games, uh, you know, because it's a great way just to socially interact yeah. uh, and eating meals together. It, it, I think it's so important this time. As a church, we are discipleship, community and worship. And we've delivered the worship section today of our church online. Discipleship is walking alongside somebody and that can be via text even. Send them a Facebook message, do an online uh, FaceTime with people. The, the technology is available today to do things differently just to provide that encouragement for people. But we all need to gather in some way to gather together a just to experience community and it's so important. And our church is great at this. Honestly, church, we're not a church with small groups. We're a church of small groups. Yeah. Uh, and that's powerful. Uh, and so we really are well established for going through these seasons that we're in right now. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a real strength of our church. And honestly, I, I'm quite filled with faith and hope in this season, uh, mm. personally, that that we can see God speak to us more right now, that faith is going inwardly uh, and that it, we can make a big difference through this if, if the church gathers, if we pray, if yep. we are reaching out to people and dealing hope, like you said, with, with faith and, and optimism. And then God is in the mix with that. Yeah. Uh, it could be a wonderful season for the church worldwide, but also for us as Highlands and in all of our locations and wherever you are. But thank you again for, for tuning in and watching uh, along today. I hope that there's something there for you to discuss and grow or mull over as you grow. Remember uh, to keep in contact with us and engage with us on social media and on, more online. In the coming week, we're going to be releasing more resources to you to help you grow in your faith and connect uh, as well with other people. Things for your kids, for your teens, for yourself, uh, for your community as well. And so this is a really cool time to be engaging with us and, and and making sure that it's not just observing from a distance, but how you can be involved. Uh, the opportunities really are growing uh, and we're excited to, to let you know about those things in the coming week and two. So keep an eye on it. Uh, jump online as often as you can. And let us know how you're going. We'd love to hear. Thank you so much for joining with us today, wherever you are. We're praying for you. We believe in you and we love you so much. Thanks, church. 